Well, good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome uh, to you all, uh, especially if you're here in person, but a very warm welcome also to those of you who are watching online. Um, for those of you who are here in Edinburgh, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you here. It's the first time I've been to Edinburgh since the last time. Um, and uh, the last time was actually um, the very first time, and that was for my honeymoon. So it has warm, romantic memories for me. It's lovely to be back here in Edinburgh. Um, so we hope you'll uh, enjoy the experience of being here or watching the uh, online program. Um, just some housekeeping, of course, as we have to do these days. Um, as you came in through the front door, which is now behind you, that's where the fire exit will be if there is a fire alarm, which we don't plan on having. So if you hear one, it's real. So make your way to the back and through the fire exit. Uh, at the back also and to the left, there are facilities, toilets and so on. So that's uh, the end of the housekeeping. So, um, as you came in, you may have noticed at the back there's um, a special bookstall um, featuring one book, Life Evolving in the Hands of God by our own Alan Fraser. And so, this is by way of giving a little plug. It's only five pounds. I got it last night and I started reading it already. It's excellent. So, well worth five pounds. And in fact, if you get the author to sign it while you're here, it may even be worth more than that in a few years' time. So, um, I'm sure he'd be happy to sign it for you. So, um, speaking of money, actually, uh, we're also open to donations, and we have uh, gone to a lot of trouble to acquire a very discreet uh, donation system where you can secretly give hundreds of pounds um, on um, a little card machine without anyone seeing exactly how much you're giving. So, um, we always welcome donations uh, to help cover the expenses uh, of the conference, especially. So... Um, you will have received a copy of the, today's program. Uh, Gavin, our secretary, will be uh, telling you a little bit more about that in due course. But one of the most important features of the program uh, towards the end of the day is our panel discussion. And to make that go more interestingly, um, it would be great to have some of your questions that occur to you during the talks or even um, at any other time. If you've got a question you want to put to some of the panelists, the speakers today, um, there are pens and paper at the back. Um, and um, a bowl for uh, inserting the questions secretly. Um, you can own up to the question if you like, but you can also ask it anonymously, um, and we will put those questions to the panel of speakers at the end of the day. So before we begin our program, I thought it would be good just to pause for a moment and remember who we are. We are Christians in science, and so it would be good just to focus uh, to begin with, um, on God, our Creator and our Savior. And um, as I was thinking what I might share with you from God's Word, of course, one of the things that always springs to our minds is Psalm 19, that wonderful hymn um, to creation. Um, and I haven't really got time to read the whole psalm, so what I'll do is I'll give you a very condensed version of it. And it goes like this. The night sky speaks without words of God's creative power to everyone. The daylight sun pours down warmth and light to everything and everyone. So also God's laws give life, light, wisdom and joy, and are more precious than anything. They guide us and guard us. So God... Help me to serve you by freeing me from controlling sin, and may I always keep my mind stayed on you, my rock and my redeemer. I love the way that psalm takes us from the most distant object that we can see in the universe, distant visible stars millions of light years away, and brings us to the nearest star, the sun, and the source of energy that sustains life on planet Earth. And then it's piercing light, illuminating every nook and cranny, not just of Earth, but of our souls. So also God's law, the directive for right living, pierces to the dark corners of our souls, where we think to hide our selfish desires and secret motives. Now the psalm is therefore not just an ode of praise to the Creator, but a reminder that God is more concerned with the quality of our lives than the extent of our knowledge of science or anything else. And his concern is that we build our lives on the solid foundation 
of his revelation to us, not just through science and what we see in his word, but by scripture and by his spirit. Let's pray. Our Father God, we pray that you would help us this morning as we meet together in your name. We thank you that you reveal yourself to each one of us who honestly seeks to know you. Help us to understand more fully your power and majesty, and above all, your infinite love for us and for all people on earth. Give us, we pray, the wisdom that we need to share your love and joy and peace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ to those with whom we live and work. Forgive us for our complacency, our fear of failure or rejection or rebuke. Give us grace to humbly seek your wisdom for the difficult challenges we face. And give us grace to listen and respect one another, to seek the truth and to speak it in love. Help us today to grow in knowledge and understanding and equip us, we pray, better to share our faith in the world around us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll hold, hand over to Gavin now. Thank you, Paul. Um, so just as we're starting to get going today, I thought it was worth uh, pausing to think that although we've got the, the conference today and a lot of the topics are being pitched at an introductory level, so maybe they're new things that you've not considered before, the conference and the topics are not happening in a vacuum. And these, these topics, miracles, evolution, science and faith, they've been talked about, discussed, chewed over, disagreed with, fallen out on, but also rejoiced and delighted in for many, many years before today. So what you may hear today, I'm hoping, from our speakers might be uh, new, but it will be part of a continuing conversation as well. So discussions around science and faith in Scotland especially have been particularly rich and with a long history. Uh, I lived here for 10 years, uh, moving away about six or seven years ago now. Uh, but I found Scotland to be a particularly kind of thrilling and dynamic place for these conversations around science and faith. And what I learned here has challenged and shaped how I think about these topics today. And I'd say conversations, and they were conversations. Uh, they weren't arguments. The people here and how they talk to each other and listen to each other is also, I think, quite distinctive and really helped to enrich that experience as well and model uh, a better way for talking about science and faith. So I hope you'll indulge me a little as I kind of tip the hat a bit at some of the organizations and uh, groups who kind of have influenced my journey here during my, my time in Scotland. So the first of those, I say, is the, uh, the Gifford Lectures, which I'm sure most of you would have heard about. I mean, these have a very long history, over a century. Um, discussing a huge variety of different topics, but two that I attended really still stick out in my mind, kind of 15, 20 years later. Um, one was by Professor Simon Conway Morris here in Edinburgh, where he talked about convergent evolution. Um, and he got across not just kind of the detail and the wonder of life, but also kind of the, the beauty and the kind of rich dynamic that evolution is as a way of it explaining how all that life is connected. It was quite, for a, for, for a physicist, it was an extreme eye-opener. Um, and as a physicist who ended up doing biology research, quite helpful. Um, the second one was uh, from Peter Harrison, who's a historian of scientists. And at the time, I hadn't really looked into the history of science or anything like that. But his talk was something we touched upon last night here as well, and how often what we say to one another, we use the same words but actually we talk past each other because how we understand the words depends on our own individual histories and the cultures we're coming from. So when we talk about science and religion or science and faith, actually we often miss what each other is saying. So we have to be more careful to listen uh, to, to one another. Uh, and his, his lectures were also a lesson for me in that when we talk about science and faith, it's not just a matter of hard science or hard doctrine. But we need that kind of grease from the humanities and from human compassion and understanding to work between those gears of science and doctrine to actually create a, a better, a more wholesome way of talking about these topics. 
So those are the Gifford lectures, but then uh, up in St. Andrews as well, there were two big initiatives, which were uh, the James Gregory lectures and the Scientists in Congregations program. And between these two, they drew in a lot of conversations uh, in schools, in churches, and for large university audiences. And the programs were a great success in their own right. And it kind of led to a kind of focus on science-engaged theology. Uh, that's now at the Divinity School in St. Andrews. And talking of divinity schools, close to the home here in Edinburgh, uh, we now have what is very convincingly, arguably, the best science and religion group in the UK. Uh, we have a representative here today. So it's only made it even better since she's been there. Um, but yeah, it was a, a new pro series of postgraduate programs and modules on science and faith. And it's continued to produce, in over the last 10, 15 years, MSc and PhD graduates in science and faith, which really as the science and faith field has been developing and growing in the last 20 years, uh, this, this is what we really need, is a new generation of people to carry on uh, the adventure, as it were, and to really help the church bring itself forward uh, with science as science develops. So we had uh, Mark Harris here last night, who was in charge of it, and he was telling me that, uh, oh yeah, you know, we've got 10 or so people in person. And I was like, well, that was great. And he's like, yeah, yeah. But then he says, we've got about 70 each year doing it on the online course. So that's like 80 people doing a master's in science and religion at the Divinity School here in Edinburgh, which I think, frankly, is, is, is amazing and a huge step forward to where we were before that started. Uh, Christians in Science, our own organization, has been active here as well, although not as active as we'd like, and hopefully today will be a spur and a kind of motivation for that to change. But we've uh, had local groups across Scotland for a while, We've run two-day conferences here in Edinburgh as well, the last in 2018, so quite long ago. So hopefully we won't wait as long uh, for the next one. Uh, we've also had the, the Grasping the Nettle initiative, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It grasps the thorny problem of science and faith in our churches and really tries to confront it head on and train and equip people in our churches to understand it better. And uh, before Murdo thinks I've maybe overlooked the SRT, there's also been the Society of Religion and Technology Project, so I'm saving the best till last, which has over 50 years now of work for the Church of Scotland, looking at when we might think science and faith topics are a little bit dry and academic, go and look at the SRT. They are involved with thinking about how new technologies, new sciences, everything from genetic engineering to how we work our economies has practical and direct impacts on people's lives day to day. It's a great example from the SRT there. So as well as these organizations, uh, just in a couple of minutes we've got remaining, I want to name drop a couple of people as well. I don't often like name dropping people, but Scotland has had giants in the field. So we were celebrating Donald Mackay's anniversary at our last, last, conference, last but one conference uh, back in, uh, in October last year. So he's, he's a kind of giant in the field in the mid part of the last 20th century. We've had people like Malcolm Jeeves up at St. Andrews, uh, also from that kind of generation of first scientist theologians that emerged in the kind of like 1950s, 60s period in the UK. Eric Priest was uh, kind of a lot of the brains behind the James Gregory lectures and a professor of magneto hydrodynamics, stars. Um, but these are big names that we can be proud of that are great scientists but great Christians who have not just engaged in science, not just engaged in theology, but have really done a lot to engage uh, church audiences and public audiences with understanding science and theology better. So I've been uh, mentioning lots of Christian organizations and lots of Christians, but what I found here in Edinburgh was like, you've got the Royal Society of Edinburgh, you've got the International Science Festival, you've got local groups from places like the Institute of Physics, and they give great science talks, but more often than not, they're talking about things that touch on science and faith matters as well. And people are interested and eager for those conversations beyond the walls of our kind of Christian church sphere. Um, that's maybe an area we need to be thinking more about, that people are interested in these conversations but maybe come at them from non-traditional angles. So how we engage with science and religion uh, in, in, is in a period of change, as is just public engagement with science in general. Um, so conversations, I think, are coming to the fore. Interaction is coming to the fore, not just, I'm guilty of this here, standing at the front and talking at you, 
new ways of talking about science and faith are arising. And there's this new generation, like I say, of scientists, theologians who are there uh, to kind of help us crest the wave, as it were. So this creates new opportunities that I think Scotland uh, will rise to. And talking all new opportunities, I'd like to invite Murdo up just to say a little bit about the Christians and Science Group based here in Edinburgh. Murdo. Thanks, Gavin. Uh, yes, it really will just be a little bit. Um, it, we're very conscious that the Christians and Science Group here in Edinburgh uh, would enjoy the pleasure of your company if you are able to join us. Many of you will be based here uh, in the, the environs of Edinburgh. Uh, and please do uh, talk to either myself uh, or to uh, Professor George Coggle, who's also here uh, today. Uh, we, along with Raphael Mod Modre, uh, who's unfortunately overseas uh, working, uh, I think he's in Nairobi at the moment, um, but uh, if you are interested in being involved and engaged with the local uh, group of Christians in Science and learning a bit more uh, about what we do, uh, then pl please do speak to either of us. Uh, of course, there's information on the websites as well, um, so you can get information there. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for the 12th of September, so uh, mark that in your diaries. Uh, and uh, we usually meet in <coughs> the King's Church in Gilmore, Gilmore Place, so reasonably central in Edinburgh, uh, for about 90 minutes, an, an opportunity not just for fellowship, not just uh, to, to do a bit of thinking about around science and faith, uh, but, but also to, to really learn uh, and to engage around the questions and issues that uh, science and faith uh, bring to us. We're not just looking for academic uh, scientists, people who are engaged in, in teaching uh, at uh, uh, a secondary school level, perhaps, people who are engaged in uh, the indus industrial uh, science as well. Uh, and there are lots of other areas where uh, scientists are engaged, uh, Christians who are uh, scientists are in engaged uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and who's perhaps who, who's... Uh, faith is sometimes challenged. Uh, people ask, can you be a scientist and, and a Christian at the same time? So please do speak to either myself or George, or as I say, um, talk to us uh, through uh, the website. Thanks very much.